Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This video I want to give I want to give some tips for passing a T-joint welding test in aluminum, 0.063 thickness. Basically, on on thin fillet welds, 0.063 and under, it boils down to this. You're you're walking a fine line. You're trying to you're trying to get penetration down just into the root of that joint, but not much past that because you don't want to melt through at all. There are limitations on how much you can melt through and nip the backside, things like that, but you don't want to at all. It's a heat control. It's an exercise in holding a close arc length and feeding the right amount of rod, feeding it into the right place, moving at the right speed, fixturing, chill blocks, all that stuff really, really, really matters. So I want to give you a few tips today just to give you a leg up on passing this test. If you're thinking, I'm never going to take this test, doesn't matter. There are good arc shots here and good sound techniques for any for anybody welding on for anybody welding a thin aluminum T joint where you want to get you want to get some adequate penetration but you don't want to melt through. Welding a fillet weld on a T joint on eighth inch or thicker, it's not really that hard. You don't really you know there's not that concern about melting through. You just basically punch it in there. When you're welding on thin thinner stuff like 063 and under. Now it's a, a bit of a challenge to get adequate penetration, get a small weld but a big enough weld, get penetration without melting through the back side, without blistering it or sucking back. So we're going to talk about the things that I have found that help as far as all that goes in passing a test like this. So the first thing obviously is to get some tack welds on it, but you can see I've got sort of like I've got a chill plate on the bottom, a little bit of a chill on the back side, at least enough of a chill bar to kind of hold argon there a little bit and actually there is a little bit of benefit to having argon gas shielding on the back side of this joint as far as not so much if you melt through but helping it wet in to the very bottom of the joint I didn't bother to set up the argon on this but it does help a little bit you can see I'm using a really small cup mainly just to uh, save argon today but actually for this joint Probably a number five is, is uh, one of the better choices. The, the goal here is to melt all the way into the root of that joint, but not melt through it. And so if you have a machine that has AC frequency adjustment, 250 is a pretty good, it's a pretty good setting. And what, what that really does more than anything, more than even directing the heat, is it seemed to push it through the backside. If I were to melt through the backside, it seemed to actually push it through instead of suck back. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going forward and back. I'm using a really tight arc down into the root and then pulling the arc length back a little bit while I feed rod. And that lets me kind of coax the metal ahead without using a lot of amperage. And then I get back over the puddle while I'm adding rods so I don't suck back, melt back the backside. Now let's look at a lower frequency. This is about 100 or 120 hertz. And you can make it happen with this. You can pass this test, but you can see it's just not driving it into the corner, into the root of the joint, quite like the 250 hertz was. This is a fillet weld gauge. Now, this particular set only goes down to eighth of an inch, so much smaller, much more precise gauges are used for this type of work. But I just want to use it as a demonstration so you can, you can get a reference and see the size of the weld. It's almost exactly an eighth of an inch. And that's important because... Per this code, the minimum there's a minimum leg size, and it's 1.5 the thickness of the metal, and that winds up being uh, about 95 thousandths of an inch. So this is just a little bit over the minimum leg size. And now you can see there, I have I have sort of nipped it a little bit on the back side. It's kind of fuzzed up, but I didn't melt it back, and that's kind of a good thing. You want to kind of see that on this test. It lets you know you kind of got in there, but you didn't risk failing due to melt back or suck back. I'll show you an example of suck back in just a second here. Something that might fail a joint like this. So far this would be okay, but that probably wouldn't. See, that's reducing the thickness there a little bit. And the reason I say it probably wouldn't is because there's a lot of different interpretation of this welding code, but most likely that would fail, that melt back right there. So those were a couple of joints. And, you, and the thing is, you're not going for looks on this you're going to get penetration but not excessive melt back so the, the joints not going to look as good as it, it would normally 
So let's look at some, some how not to weld type arc shots. This is a common mistake is just kind of starting the, the bead off too big. And you, you're already tunneling. You can see it's, it's wetting into the sides, but there's a void. There's a notch there at the front of the puddle. It's just not. I haven't pushed it down in there, and I've got a big weld, and, and I've got what looks to be obvious lack of fusion there. Uh, I've also got a little pour down there in the, on the bottom toe. But that's not what you want to see. That's not the way you want the puddle to look. And so you saw me using 250 hertz. Let's look at 250 hertz on 8th inch thick metal. Um, but I'm still using the long arc. So you, just to show you that, that uh, the uh, frequency is not the main thing. If I use a long arc, it's still got that problem. It's still got the problem of not pushing it down into the root of the joint. And that's when you're taking a welding test, that's where the rubber meets the road. Still 250 hertz, but now a tighter arc. Everything's much better. And like I said, this is on 8th inch thick metal, so I'm not really worried about melting back. And this is down at 60 hertz. See, it, I've, I've got that tight arc, but it's getting in there. So frequency is not the main thing. It does make a little difference, though. Also, let's look at contaminating the electrode. Welding with a contaminated electrode on a welding test, you're just kind of dead in the water. You know, you can see all that crud floating around in the puddle there. And I'm intentionally flicking wire onto the electrode. If that happens, you just stop immediately uh, and, and clean up, you know, get a new electrode. That's the best thing. All right, I hate to end on, on uh, crappy weld, so let's, let's go back to the, the better arc shots and the better weld, just a refresher here. If you do have AC frequency, 250 hertz seemed to give better results than 120 hertz, especially when it came to when I did melt through, it seemed to push it through instead of suck back, which kind of makes sense because the higher the frequency, it kind of chokes down the arc and creates a little what they call arc pressure or arc force. This is how they're tested here. They're cut this many times. They're cut eight times. So four specimens are used and it's a lot of work to cut, polish, and etch these things. But this this is a good example of a decent weld profile on this, this particular thickness. Um, the only problem is if you look if you look carefully you saw these two little tiny pores there. Now there are limitations for pores. It's not like you can't have any but the best thing is not to have any, and if you clean your metal properly, you probably won't. I didn't clean this stuff. I'm just making, trying to get some good shots. You can see a lot of pores here. And also, there's a good example of some lack of fusion. Right there in the corner of that well, that little straight line, that's lack of fusion. There are very tight limits with D17 on lack of fusion. That would fail. I'm not going to get into the limits because it's a whole long discussion. So I hope this helps somebody pass a welding test, get a raise, get a promotion, just increase your skill set. Uh, the way I support these videos is with my online store at weldmonger.com. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.